Hello everyone and welcome back to video number six. In this video we're going to look at collision detection. So when the player touches the door at the end of the level, they go to the next level. Or when the player touches lava, they can either restart the level or lose a life. So let's get into it. So first thing I want to do is create some type of object so that when the player touches it, they go to the next level. So I'm going to create a simple door. So in order to do this, I want to create a new sprite. So I can go down to the icon down here, choose a sprite, and I'm going to click on paint. And I want to keep it simple. I want just a rectangular black door. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool, fill it in with black, drag on the screen, and then drag this to the center of the workspace. Now I have the door, but it's important I want to rename it here so I know it's the door when I'm working in my code. So I'll change the name to door. Now I can drag this door down to the bottom right, and it looks a little bit too big, so I'm going to change the size to, let's try 75. Yeah, 75 looks about right. So now I have my player, I have my door. Now I want to make the code that says, when the player touches the door, go to the next level. So I'll go down here, click on my player, go to the top left, click on code, and now I can start making some code. So first thing I want to do is go to events, add when the green flag is clicked. Now I want to go to control, add a forever loop. Since I want this happening at all times throughout the game, whenever a player touches the door, go to the next level. So I need that forever loop. Then we need an if then, because it's if the player is touching a door, then go to the next level. First is if the player is touching the door. Well, since we're looking at if the player is touching the door, we want to go to sensing, and we'll use this first block here, touching mouse pointer. I'm going to drag that in, but I don't want it to happen when the mouse or pointer is touching the player, so I'm going to click this down arrow and choose door. So if the player is touching the door, then go to the next level. So I can find go to the next level under looks, and then I want to choose the next backdrop block. So remember, backgrounds or levels are called backdrops. So if I click here, choose backdrops, I can see level one, level two, and level three. So in the code, so in the code we have if the player is touching the door, then go to the next level. So if I press play now, I can move my player, and once I get to the door, it should go, whoa, some weird stuff going on. It looks like it was going to the next level, but it looked a little glitchy. And the reason why is because when we go to the next level, the player is just staying at the door, so it's constantly changing levels. So what we have to do is when the player touches the door, we do want it to go to the next level, but we also want the player to go back to the beginning where they were before. The good news is, is we already have that code over here. Go to the starting point and point in the right direction. So I'm going to right click, duplicate those two blocks of code, and put it underneath next backdrop. Now if we go back to the game, I'm going to move toward the door. Whoa, and nothing happens. Oh, it's because it's when the green flag is clicked. So I have to make sure I'm clicking that green flag in order for the code to work. Now we can see that it's highlighted over here so we know the code is running. So now if I move my player, if I touch the door, it should change to level two. There we go. And the player is at the beginning of the level. Fantastic. So now if I keep going, there's some lava, but whoa, I fall and nothing happens when I touch the lava. So that's what we want to do here next, is say, when the player touches the lava, we want him to go back to the beginning of the level. So once again, we're going to go to control, grab an if then, and say, if touching the lava, then go back to the beginning of the level. 
So in order to see if it's touching the lava, we're once again gonna to go to sensing, but this time we're gonna choose the second block, touching color. Because in this first block up here, if we duplicate it, this one only allows me to choose mouse or pointer, the edge, or the door. So I have to create a sprite in order to use that first one. So instead, we're gonna use the color one. And we wanna click on that brownish color, use the color picker at the bottom, and choose that red lava. So if the player is touching the red lava, then we want the player to go back to the beginning of the screen. So once again, we can duplicate this same code because that first block sends the player back to the beginning and the second block makes sure that the player is pointing in the right direction. So I'll click that green flag, move to the right, and when I touch the lava, the player does in fact go to the beginning of the level. But I did notice one thing. When I hit that green flag, it's keeping me on level two. But every time I restart the game, I want it to go back to level one. So notice if I hit stop and I start the game over, it should go to level one, but it keeps me on level two. So we wanna add one more little bit of code in order to make sure we're restarting at level one each time we start the game. So we can do this by going to looks and switch backdrop, but instead of level three, we want it as level one. And notice I put that underneath the starting position and starting direction code. So these blocks right here are for the beginning of the game. If I wanted to, I could add a comment and I could say beginning of game just so I know that that code is gonna be for the beginning of the game. So now at the beginning, it's gonna to go to the starting position, point in the right direction, and always start at level one. So if I click the green flag, notice now I go back to level one, which is exactly what we wanted. I touch the door, get to level two, hit the lava, there we go, restart at the level. Let's get over that lava, there we go, on to level three. And now the final thing for this video is if the player falls in one of those holes, we want him to start at the beginning of the level again. So notice he falls in the hole, and now I'm kind of stuck down here. So here we go back to level three, and we want to make sure that if the player falls in the hole, that they're gonna go back to the beginning of the level. So I'm gonna stop the code there. Once again, add another if then. So I'll go to control, if then. And now this one is gonna be based off the player's position. We're gonna say if the player's Y position, so Y, let's actually drag the player down here. So the Y is at negative 158. So we're gonna say if the player's Y position is less than negative 158, we want the player to go back to the beginning of the level. So how I can do that is go to operators, and here we have that less than sign, so we'll drag that in there. And in order to get the player's Y position, I'll go to motion, scroll down a little bit, and we can see Y position. So if the player's Y position we said was less than, let's try negative 160. We can always adjust this if it doesn't work. So if the player's Y position is less than negative 160, then once again, we want to send the player back to the beginning of the level. So if I hit the green flag, it's gonna send me back to level one, but that's all right. Level two, we'll jump over the lava. And then now level three, if I fall in one of those holes, I should go back to the beginning. There we go. It does in fact work. If you don't like the way that it looks, since the player technically doesn't fall too far in the hole, I could go and change this to negative 175. And, and once again, you can try it out and see what looks best for you. So there we have it, collision detection. Now we can have the player go to the next level. If the player touches a lava or falls in a hole, they go back to the beginning of the level. I'll see you in the next video.